Hello everybody and welcome back to our day one stream of our top eight matches for the Victory Road World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour and Metafi. My name is Evan and I'm now joined by Connor to bring you guys the second match um, between Canada and India that we have for you guys today. How are you feeling, Connor? Uh, I'm feeling a bit worn out after that for the game I just cast there with Hayden, which is also India versus Canada, because it was a very back and forth game. It was one game, one player dominated, game two, the other player dominated, and then game three, they were going back and forth at it for a little bit until unfortunately the bulky Pokemon did die off and we saw the opposing trick room go over. And of course, that was between Matt Tid and Karfik uh, Bandagonda. And now we're going to be seeing Jean Marc Hebert versus Rowan Hall. And, you know, both of these players, you know, they come very far in this tournament. Of course, Jean-Marc is known very well for his contribution to many different player draft leagues and team tournaments. So it's going to be fun seeing him on stream. I think we cast him a while back. I think it's actually myself who did that. And we have, you know, Rowan, who I don't believe I cast myself, but looking at the team he's using is something that hits quite close home to me. And it's a team that I've had a lot of fun with in the tail end of the VGC 2022 era. And of course, after that, we'll have Emilio Forbes versus Hippolyte Bernard, which is a former Worlds runner-up versus one of the winner of the very first uh, Sword and Shield uh, Sword and Shield regionals in Hippolyte Bernard. Yep. So the games today have been really back and forth, right? Like players really wanting to fight for their that money. This. These matches are you know, essentially a $500 USD match because um, top four positions in our World Cup will get to um, go home with $500 and more money to come for um, the second place and the first place. And John Mark here, let's jump into our players from um, Canada. John Mark is a returning manager for Canada and definitely a very good performance this year, you know, um, taking charge of the team again and going up. Uh, against a lot of strong teams all the way here and right now having to um, face India. Both Canada and India, you know, this is their first time in top 16, but their um, records all the way through back um, from week one till now have been so impressive and I can see that these teams have really grown a lot. So there are more stuff that I um, went to research while the match, you know, the match was going on just now regarding both Canada and India, um, one of their, two of their players were being matched up, um, Navjit versus, um, um, I'm blanking out here, Navjit versus Raghav, oh. Raghav, Raghav, and then both of them are 6 and 0 oh right now, so they're kind of playing, you know, to be undefeated, um, but both of them don't have capture cards, so we will not be featuring their match for this weekend. So let's jump into the players here. Um, we have Sean Mark um, from Canada versus Rowan from India. Yeah, so Jean Mark, you know, as I said, has a lot of history in these team tournaments, and I've worked with him on teams like the Blizzards and other leagues that we've been in together. But of course, in terms of the official events and just bigger events we've had as well, you know, you've got the Vancouver Regionals Top Four, which was quite recently. You've got the World Cup Canada Manager last year, and again this year, if you have mentioned. The Costa Mesa Regionals in 2018, top 16, and top 8 at the Collinsville Regionals in 2017. On the other side, again, we have a, a normal case of, you know, of what we often see is these players having few few performances but doing very well in the overall sense of VGC. With Rowan Hills, it's fair, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that Regionals name, but they got Regionals top 16 uh, in 2022, so quite recent. So to pair up well with India's success in the past two World Cups, you know, just seeing some recent success in IRL events, and it's going to be a, a nice one of those little mind games of a lot of finishes versus recent finishes, and just the overall sense of how well your teams can support you going forward. So Rowan got top 16 at the Secaucus Regionals, or some people call it the New Jersey Regionals, but that Regionals was really stacked with a lot of very good players, and he used um, sort of a Zashan and Kyogre core to be able to get such a good result, and Rowan, although he played started playing Pokemon in um started playing VGC in Sword and Shield, but he's been really like performing well in this series 12 um season. And 
he's actually 5 and 0, 2 5 1 in this World Cup. So his current record right now is 5 and 1. He's been using mainly Zashan Ogre teams, and this team is a very has a very strange story. This Zashan Kyogre with the Charizard is the team that actually helped win India win their um, deciding match against Singapore last week and was being piloted by Abai, the manager of India, to get that win. So um, being able to see it here used by Rowan is so interesting um, for you know India to try and get as you know try and climb further up in this top card bracket. From John Mark's side, this team is also has an interesting story because John Mark um uh, had to fight against uh, uh, his friend like Is Isabel Lee as or Easy, and Easy used this team composition back in the Vancouver Regionals top eight match. And John Mark actually had a similar team, but he had Zapdos over the Among Us. But this time he's kind of using Easy's team composition here and trying to get some value off of it. This is a team that kind of centers around Dynamax Kyogre since the rest of the Pokemon are like support Pokemon and we'll get to see how this Kyogre fares up against an opposing like Zashan Kyogre team as well together with that um, Thunderous which seems very threatening on Rowan's side. Yeah, Rowan's side of course also being the team that came I believe it was top 8 or top 4 in the NAIC with Taran Birdie or Rayquaza. Yeah. So... You know, it's got a bit of an extra leverage of that as well. And it's just a team you know, that has so many different options. Like you said, Jean Marc has the option to go for just, you know, Dynamax Kyogre with supportive options all around. Any of the Pokemon on the other side, you know, I'd say about two thirds of the team can go big, as we do see that we have the Grim Style and Zashin coming out from Jean Marc. So the common, you know, you know, get Grim Style set up alongside some, you know, get Grim Style with screen, sorry, alongside one of your strong Pokemon in front of Amoongus and the Kyogre. So Amoongus can easily redirect some of these hits away, maybe we can start sporing things, which means that the Kyogre can just go for its really strong water spouts in a really steady path of fashion and, you know, just without any hindrance. And yes, Crimsnarl, if it is the target for the sport, will guarantee its light screen off first, or if it has a fake out, like an unorthodox Crimsnarl, then it might then guarantee a couple of hits off, you know, a couple of hits off there. But right now, you know, it's a plain little vanilla sense of the game here. If any of these players can take the front front foot, light screen does come out there, and you know we have to see how much damage it does do in return. Behemoth Blade is going to go straight into that Moongus because of the redirection. But we'll be lying down on how much this Kyogre can do because Kyogre is a very strong Pokemon with what it can do, and that was a lot of damage down on that Moongus. It just hangs on. Water Spout is going to come out and do about 50%, maybe about 40, 60% to both these Pokemon. And already we're in a bit of a scary sense because Amoongus can just redirect away again and allow another water spot to go off because Zashin is going to go before that Kyogre does. Yeah, a very strong start coming out from Rowan making full use of that Mystic Water on the Kyogre to put as much damage as possible in rain. And yeah, John Mark does seem to be in a precarious position even though he set up that light screen to reduce the damage. This water spout is just too powerful. And Among Us just very clutch and being able to survive that full powered beam of blade coming out from the Zashan at just 2 HP. Uh, just a very amazing to see from Rowan's side. As he does switch out the Among Us to get some regenerator health back and brings that Thunderous in to put on more pressure. Yeah, Thunderous being in, you know, given the team start, it's likely to be a very offensive Thunderous unless Rowan had decided to make it into a prankster version uh, a lot. Out of the orthodox how the team usually is played. Kyogre though breaking through the paralysis that could have happened because of that thunder wave. And it's just gonna get that water spout off. Zashin protect itself to stay safe, maybe trying to pivot around any more Moongus hits. Then Grimmsnarl gonna go down, but Grimmsnarl has done its job really. We don't really need to put that that reflect up against the opposing team because all these Pokemon have a nice bit of bulk to them, either through their, their stats or their typing. But Kyogre comes in, so it's gonna be a Kyogre showdown. We already know that Jean Marc's Kyogre is faster, and if it is possibly carrying an assault vest item to be bulkier, it can go for those Thunders or maybe a Max Lightning, which Rowan isn't going to enjoy, and it's going to be really annoying, you know, getting around things. We could see Dynamax and the Thunderous, though, to then give it a bit more bulk and maybe have a Max Lightning of its own go off. So, you know, it's going to be down to, you know, who wins the speed ties and speed wars, horse paralysis does make that a bit easier to go around. 
And it's going to come down to the damage rolls as well. Zashin isn't going to take the level water spot most likely. And, you know, this this Thunderous is really threatening Kyogre with any of its moves, really. I really like the Protect coming out from John Mark in their previous turn and just letting the Grims now go down. Not letting, not letting any Pokemon in the back take unnecessary damage from that full powered water spout. And the Zashin will now, you know, get another turn to um, move first and deal important damage. This makes sense for Jean Marc to Dynamax the Kyogre right now. Interesting to see that the that Rowan doesn't want to opt to Dynamax the um, Thunderous right off the bat and switches the Among Us in to just take some soak up some damage. I think um, calling that John Mark is gonna Dynamax so he can stall out Dynamax turns and come up with a good Thunderous endgame here. Yeah, having to rely on those endgame turns, play rough going into the Kyogre, just misses a knockout. Gets a, a very unnecessary attack drop, just a little bit of salt in the wound if it was a physical attacker. We do see the max water coming out, going into a Moongus with that rain up, with how high the special attack of Kyogre is. It is not going to matter heavily as it does just go down, but it does mean that Thunderous can come in nice and safely, revealing a life orb as well instead of the option of an assault vest and water spout doing a measly little nothing to both these Pokemon, meaning that. John Mark has gone and turned around what a really, you know, off pretty turn one was into a really stable set of games of the turn, sorry, the rest of this match. This Thunderous can come in quite comfortably, it can maybe outspeed this this uh this Kyogre, but at what cost? Because Ashen can just behemoth blade it if it gets a really nice roll on it. Yeah, it's a really important um play rough hit on the Kyogre to be able to chip it down so much so that the water spout does essentially nothing. But here, the Thunderous will naturally have to Dynamax here, you know, to try and keep up with speeds or even try and be as bulky as possible. But yeah, uh, for John Mark, the logical thing to do right now would be to go for that um, Beam of Blade into the Thunderous and also at the same time hope that this Life Orb Kyogre will be able to take one hit from the Thunderous. It's usually built to do that, then to be able to go for that next um, Geyser to finish off the Thunderous in return. Yeah, we do. We'll see if that does happen. Ooh. A Max Geyser and a Behemoth Blade both go into that Thunderous there. And Origin Pulse is going to come out now. The move of choice because, of course, it has such a HP. Zashin does go down. Koga, you know, it's quite specially bulky. It's going to take that fairly well. Meaning that, you know, that was a bit of a wasted turn there for Jean Marc as Rowan read really well into that. And But Rowan was then relying on move, moves a bit shaky on their accuracy. Not always going to hit 100% of the time, but. Luckily, it hit and did enough damage to the thing it wanted to get rid of. Defiant on Thunderous will activate, meaning that it's going to be a really annoying Thunderous to deal with now because it's faster than the Koga, most likely. And it's going to be, you know, it can't be fake out. Well, it can be fake out, I should say, but that fake out won't matter. Koga likely get dropped to fake out if it happens, but knowing it's essentially neutered, you know, Jean Marc can probably just leave it a bit, maybe go, for, maybe just. Go for a double up into this Thunderous again. It could be just enough if the moves lay right, unless it's Flare Blitz, which is going to be nerfed by this rain. So, Rowan sitting comfortably, but Jean Marc has his outs and can maybe take it from here to try and push forward and see what he can work with. It was a very important uh, origin pulse for the Kyogre to hit. Kyogre needed to one break out of paralysis and then hit the origin pulse to take the Zashan out. But from Rowan's end, a very, very good max guard. Like, it's very natural for the Zashan and the Kyogre to double up into this big threat of a Thunderous, right? But that Max Guard just paid dividends and Zashan just went down like that, forcing the Incineroar to come in to um, proc that Defiant on the Thunderous. Here, this Max Lightning easily takes out a Dynamax Kyogre and it's just Incineroar against the world versus the Thunderous and, you know, another Pokemon in the back. The plus side is that Rowan will have to review this uh, Zashan, but he really played very well to stall Dynamax, get the Thunderous in at an advantageous position, right? And then go for this Max Guard to essentially win the game here. Yeah, taking that, you know, taking the game one into a shaky mid game and then taking it into you know, a really nice end game was something that Rowan, you know, played very well. Like you said, it's a very important Max Guard because Thunderous, knowing that, you know, once it got the Defiant up, once Incineroar came in, it was a problem for Jean Marc that he had to kind of target down. And he played, and just Rowan playing really well into that. You know, yes, the water spout the turn before is very measly, and, you know, maybe could have been bred with an Origin Pulse knowing the moves that are on the field. But just, you know, going from that situation to like, okay, Origin Pulse is going to do a chip 
to the Kyogre, so it's not it's going to be threatened a bit more. And maybe it'll be a, a roll that helped out with that wild charge, which turned into Bias Lightning. But it also guaranteed that the Zashim was going down, which did force in that Incineroar. So not only playing to his own Pokemon, but playing on his opponent's Pokemon like he's got some sort of self-control device on them was really, really good. And we're going to see if Jean-Marc can really play around that to try and, you know, think, okay, can I try and manipulate your side of the field? Or can I maybe have bulkier Pokemon play a bit faster, play a bit or even a bit slower, just to kind of think out, you know, what is the best turn to go with that will affect the long run in the game. Overall, both players also got a lot of information from each other. They are able to see all the four Pokemon that each side chose. At the same time, there were all the live op reviews on the Kyogre on um, John Mark's side and also on the Thunderous on Rowan's side. So, you know, Thunderous to, um, doesn't have an item to prevent sleep, you know, or like it's shown to be a more offensive threat and a very important Dynamax target from Rowan's side. So both players do have to go back to the drawing board for John Mark, you know, to try and figure out a way to break through that um, the yeah, Kyogre lead, right? Kyogre and Among Us lead that was so um, helpful for Rowan in the first few turns of that game one. Yeah, it was very helpful as it was. We see Grim Start and Zashin coming out again for uh, Jean Marc's side. We see Zashin plus Thunderous. So, no switch ups for Jean Marc. Jean Marc probably thinking, you know, I had a game plan, just got executed a bit differently. Whereas Rowan is, you know, taking the pace a bit differently, thinking, you know, Kyogre's a bit bait to lead with. It's, you know, it's going to be targeted down instantly. It needs to be preserved so it can get those sports parts off at a nice, even pace. So, Sashin's a good replacement there. It threatens both of these Pokemon. Grimmsnarl, not often known for taking the hit from the Zashin unless it carries a very, very. And the opposing Zashin, depending on how it's built, if it's faster, it could maybe get hit down first. But if it's faster, it could be less bulky. So it's the, the good old Zashin roulette of, you know, who has the bulky Zashin, who has the speedy Zashin. But we'll see that the speedy Zashin will be Jean Marks because of that paralysis. The, the Behemoth play does go into protect. Zashin breaks through its paralysis. We'll see who this goes into. Because if we do see the drop on the, on the Grim Snout, which we do, it is going to be going away and it isn't going to be a nuisance anymore. So, you know, no screens going up, which is actually a good pace setter for Rowan in these early turns. Yeah, very good turn one coming out from Rowan. And the Thunderous, uh, sorry, the Grim Snarl kept going for its Gambit move, right? We call it the Grim Snarl's Gambit to go for a paralysis into uh, Zashan or any Pokemon on the opposing side and just doesn't get that any paralysis. Um, from Rowan's side, just couldn't catch a break, and Zashan just easily takes the um, the Grim Snarl down in one hit. And at the cost of like Zashan always moving after the um, Zashan on John Mark's side, but you know you can you know take that paralysis and still have good Dynamax options like um, in your team. So from John Mark's side, having to switch in the Among Us here and kind of threaten the uh, ball back onto the Zashin on Rowan's side. Yeah, Rowan, you know, getting set behind a little bit there. It's going to be annoying, but breaking through the process is, yet again, going to go down onto the Zashin. It does do a lot. So Zashins are both about mana away mana. They're a bit equal on the effects they have. Amoongus going to soak up that spore that came through. So, you know, Amoongus kind of, you know, being ignored of what it does best by, you know, itself. And... You know, so we have a bit of a mirror image on the field and with how it's set out, you know, either Amoongus, we know that the Amoongus on Rowan's side isn't the best at taking the Behemoth Blades. It lived on 2 HP last time. We don't have that as a high roll or it could even be a low roll. We, we, it's just one of those things that players have to think heavily on. Of course, we know that Rowan can say hi to the opposing Amoongus and can maybe go for its own Behemoth Blade or just go down to the Zashian and play, you know, a bit of its own Gambit that the Grim Star was playing last turn. The kind of set speed tiers, you know, are we going to see any uh, Rage Powders? We do see a Protect, though, from the Zashian. So no attacks going to that this turn. Another Protect. So Spores, if they do go out, aren't going to be hitting anything. Foul Play, just to cover bases, could have been a switch in there, is going to go off, does not hit because of Protect and Spore again. Going into a protect, so Amoongus is doing all they can, but nothing really comes of it. Such a funny turn of both the Zashans protecting from both the Amoongus' moves. I think back in uh, the previous turn, like just a shout outs to Rowan for kind of 
not dynamaxing the um, Thunderous right off the bat and switching this Among Us in to take the spot defensively and also provide good support for Rowan's um, Zashen here. John Mark's Zashen is gonna go for the offensive now. Um, Rowan's like Among Us is forced to go for Rage Powder, but wow, look at that damage roll. Um, twice in a row, Zashen isn't able to take out the Among Us on turn one. Here comes the foul play, but actually goes into the Among Us, doesn't get um, like doesn't go into the Zashen from Rowan's side, doesn't and because like this Among Us is not. Um, like does not fail to uh, the Rage Powder, right? But with this double up, he's able to take out a very important Pokemon in Among Us on Rowan's team, as Thunderous is then able to switch in yet again. But Pokemon count is, you know, back to three per piece, right? Three um, on each side. And I think John Mark, with that previous turn, being able to double into the Among Us just um, helped a lot in this position here, since his Zashan will always be able to move first and threaten good damage into this Thunderous. Yeah, he's going to be throwing a lot of damage. Of course, that double up there, you know, was a bit annoying for getting rid of the of the Amoongus, but, you know, possibly calling around Zashan or just Rage Powders. The Behemoth Blade will come out from Jean-Marc Zashan. Ivory's Pokemon aren't going to enjoy taking it. Of course, Rowan Zashan going down at Paralysis, really coming in as a burden because, you know, it's going to be forced to be slower and it kind of just determines the speed tiers straight away. Thunderous, though, is going to go for that airstream into the Cobra Berry on the Amoongus. Let's see how much it breaks through because Thunderous is a very strong Pokemon. It just misses the knockout, which is very, very annoying because it means Amoongus can do Amoongus shenanigans. A couple more turns until it's knocked out. And if there's a spore here, then that's going to be super annoying as it does go in to the Thunderous, and it is a life orb, so no Lumberry to keep it safe here. And that means Kyogre is coming in in front of a Zacian that can go for a play rough, and a double up is easily going to knock it out, given the damage we saw earlier in game one. So Jean Marc sitting comfortably, even in front of this Titan of Waylord and Thunderous. Yeah, perfect turn coming out from John Mark. Um, he already knew that his Among Us was carrying the Cobra Berry all along. He was always designed to survive the life of Max Airstream from the Thunderous. So he always went for the spore on that spot. Um, Rowan kind of just thought this turn, like this in inevitable sequence of events out a little bit further. The Zashan is in full control now. Zashan can just keep clicking um, Beamer Blades into the opposing slot. This Thunderous has to take this first turn of sleep. But John Mark always tries to play towards that um, Kyogre endgame and it's working out really well. So here comes the Spore plus the um, Beamer, sorry, plus the Play Rough, double up into this Kyogre. Um, Rowan is kind of making a good call here, stalling out one turn, but Thunderous is forced to sleep here and Zashan is still in control, always being able to do the necessary damage before John Mark's Kyogre comes in to clean up. Yeah, and putting it in a position where Kyogre is still threatened by the Zashin is just something that is you know going to be a struggle for this team. Play Rough goes off, it lives on 19 HP, Origin Pulse goes into Protect on the Amoongus. It does go into the Zashin though, this could be a bit of a pivotal turn here. It does hit, but does it get the knockout it should do from this range, and it's gone down. And we now know that if there's an Ice Beam on this Kyogre, it can go into that Amoongus. But if there's anything that you know, like a Fake Out or a Grassy Glide in the back, it is going to be annoying. We do see Kyogre coming through though, so it's going to be everyone's favorite game of speed tiers now. Because, you know, if one Kyogre is faster, then that's going to get damage off first. Ice Beam, you know, is kind of a safe play because you're guaranteed to be hitting into that Amoongus. And if Thunderous wakes up and goes before that Kyogre, then that is going to be amazing for Rowan. So Rowan is having to rely on a really nice roll, even on this Dynamax. No Defiant boosts. So it might not get the knockout when it goes big and there's also you know such low hp on the kyogre that you know it's gonna die to a little sneeze from this kyogre which is going to be amazing if i could fit kyogre in a sentence as small time as possible i don't know <laughs> what i could do as you do see the rage powder coming off from the Amoongus to kind of settle out the turn so it's going to be you know the usual pace thunderous wakes up it goes for that fly so it's going to be avoiding some turns here course there was a bit of a glitch there on our video feed so we don't know i couldn't see what move was being selected so it's good to have that ambiguousness and we see the ice beam go into amoongus so that fly is pretty much guaranteed to go into kyogre and if it has protect it can just circumnavigate that but the thunderous avoids so great call there 
from Rowan getting an attack and a protect in the same turn, which is why a lot of players like to click fly still, even if they haven't got their Dynamax Factor. Yeah, both players were very, like, I was commanding, Ro commanding Rowan for, you know, stalling out Dynamax earlier. Wow, that fly is very impressive because it critical hit into the Kyogre, um, coupled with that uh, life orb. So here, Rowan kind of goes for the out of Ice Beam. You notice that Rowan didn't click other moves into this Kyogre. Um, Ice Beam makes more sense to uh, at least try to get that freeze uh, as a way out for Rowan here. So here comes the Max Hailstorm into the Thunderous. Since Thunderous has to come down with its fly, Kyogre will now be able to take that KO. But previously, Kyogre would, you know, John Mark's Kyogre could have, you know, like, um, taken a more secure KO onto Rowan's side, kind of predicting if Thunderous were to go for the fly. But the threat of Thunderous's um, electric type attacks are just too important for uh, John Mark, and he chose to target the Thunderous instead. So here, Rowan has to, um, yeah, Rowan puts the tower in and forfeits here since the hail would easily chip away at his own Kyogre. But a very good back and forth here. And overall, props to John Mark for stalling out Dynamax a bit later, coming out with that Dynamax Kyogre endgame to just help him win that game. Uh, win game two quite commandingly. And also that Koba Berry reveal on the Among Us was just important to help put the Thunderous to sleep and just um, help make the Kyogre endgame e more easy for him. Yeah, making that Kyogre endgame easy and just you know, preserving it till the end, that is something that when you face these really offensive teams, you have to kind of keep in mind of if you keep your Dynamax safe until the very end, you can then outpace you know, the damage they're putting out from once they've lost all that damage, then they're really not doing much. And, you know, Jean-Marc showing really well, you know, what that team did as well of just pivoting around the Kyogre and making sure that your Pokemon are really supportive, helping out the Kyogre and the Zacian. And then Kyogre can just go big or just hit those water spouts and origin pulses. And with that life orb, you know, it doesn't really matter how, if it's taken HP, if it's big, if it's small, it's going to do lots and lots of damage. You'll have to see, you know, if Ivan's players adapt in the next game, Jean Marc could go for another comfort pick in going for the lead with. With the uh, Zashian plus Grimmsnarl, maybe even Kyogre plus Grimmsnarl, or whatever else we'll see as we do come into this gameplay. We have the Zashian and the Grimmsnarl, the best friends forever on the field here. As we see Amoongus come out alongside Kyogre again, so thinking it won me game one, I can take it into game three. Maybe a slightly different play for this turn as well, maybe going big with the Kyogre to guarantee damage all over the board, or maybe just going again for that Rage Powder, maybe for a Spore. I have to see you know, what's going on because Rowan has so many options to kind of calculate that, you know, Jean-Marc can have to play into it as well. We couldn't even see a repeat of last turn with that instant Thunder Wave or maybe an instant Light Screen. As we see, the Rage Powder does come out, though, so it's going to be a bit of redirection there, so we know that there's no move going into that Kyogre. The Grim Snarl does go all the Light Screen, so we're going to weaken that. The War Spout just for this one, what well, I say for this one turn, for this time being, the Beam of Blade goes into Moongus, it goes down to that 4 HP, so a bit of a better roll than it was last time, but still not the best as going down to the red. Water Spout does again about 50-60% to these Pokemon, and Kyogre, you know, sitting quite literally swimmingly on this field because we can just see a Rage Powder come out again from the Moongus, not opening to switch out and just going for sheer damage this time round. Rowan not risking anything, Jean-Marc goes to that Protect. Yeah, this is a very powerful lead coming out from Rowan and the same events turned played out back in game one, right? The Among Us just is built uh, you know just enough to always take a full power plus one beam of blade coming out from the um, Zashian here. So here things play differently and the Among Us goes for the Reach Powder instead, you know, helping the Kyogre soak up that uh the Thunder Wave from the Grimms now, so the Kyogre doesn't have to be crippled as much in future turns. Uh, Grimm's now, you know, always on John Marks and going down in the first few turns so easily. But um, this time being able to set up the light screen could be helpful towards the uh, end game. And same in turn of events again, Ky um, John Mark has to switch in his Kyogre here. Uh, with like, and Rowan still has that Among Us, you know, to protect his own Kyogre. It's just a very strong position. This Zashan um, is kind of running on a timer here, right? If, Rowan's Kyogre were to click like Origin Pulse and hit this time on the Zashan, then John Mark all of a sudden will be down to just two Pokemon. 
Yeah, Rowan is a decision, like you said, where he's just got the sheer power. But at the same time, the Koga coming in does kind of bit of a bit of a spanner in the works because it can just go for its own spread moves, completely ignoring the Amoongus. And Rowan, as we see, was hesitant what move to put in because he's in a position of like if he goes for Ice Beam, that's knocking out. If he goes for a rate, you know, if he's redirected at least. If he goes for maybe a spread move, that's that's going to do a lot of damage. We see the damage roll coming out from this though. Koga with his life orb is able to go very bulky and takes nothing from that. Comes back with its own water spell and does even more in return. Plus getting that knockout on that very pesky Amoongus. With that little bit of a crit, you know, just to rub it in saying, you know, I've definitely got that knockout on your paralyzed low HP Amoongus. Life orb chip is going to be a little bit annoying for John Mark because yes, the life orb boost to water spell is very good. But there's a time when the ratio of HP to life orb boost does become a bit uneven. But, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to be there anytime soon. As you see, Rowan is now in position where, you know, Ivy's Pokemon are going to be faster than the Kyogre. But Amoongus is still going to be a hindrance. And Amoongus is going to just sit there and it's going to wreak Rage Powder. It can take hits. Can't redirect that Water Spout. But it can still redirect just enough to kind of figure out speed ties, to kind of figure out where the field is going from here. As we do see, Rowan does bring in the Zacian, which, you know, can cause problems for both of these Pokemon, but still not the end of the world for John Mark. This Amoongus switch from John Mark in the previous turn was such a great switch, you know. You don't want your Zacian to go down. And from John Mark's perspective, his Zacian is just so important for that Thunderous in the back. So being able to switch it out, use the Amoongus to soak up some damage, it helped so much in the previous turn. Over here, Rowan actually chooses to switch in the Zacian instead of the Thunderous on this turn. Um, doesn't want to go up against like the Rage Powder pressure coming out from Among Us here. And I think his plan here would be to take out the Among Us as soon as he can. Um, from John Mark's end, I think Dynamaxing the Kyogre, it's like now or never to be able to um, remove the Zacian as quick as he can. Then, because John Mark is really running out of um, resources here with very low health Zacian in the back, Let's see how much like this Among Us can do to protect John Mark's um, Kyogre, right, and help Ky um, help this Kyogre win this end game. Yeah, the Kyogre has been put position where it can win the end game. Instead of going for that late game Dynamax, so it has gone for that early game Dynamax. Moongus going for a lower protect, I do believe we should be on the opposing side and covering every base. Water spell. Revealing the speed tiers again, we could be seeing a double speed die, or we could be revealing that Rowan is faster, but with that Dynamax factor, absolutely no damage onto Kyogre. Max guys are coming out, it's in the rain, Ivory Slots is not going to enjoy it. Zacian does take a big chunk, you know, nearly about 30% of his HP is taken out, but even through Protect, and that is something that is very scary with Life Orb Kyogre in the rain when Dynamaxed all the, you know, all the jargon thrown in there at one time. And a really Rowan. good protect, yeah. A really good protect coming out from bro both sides, uh, Zashan and Among Us. Apologies, um, Connor. But the Among Us protect is very important, you know, not to take unnecessary damage. But and this Zashan's um, protect is important to stall out at least one turn of um, Jean Marc's Kyogre, since you can kind of expect it to Dynamax on that turn. So now Zashan has very good control, you know, to be able to take one important KO and then leave John Mark with just two Pokemon left. And John, John Mark is going down to a timer here, you really need to take important KOs, um, you know, with this Kyogre to kind of close out this endgame. Yeah, so I'll see what KOs he can get as Amoongus does drop completely to that Behemoth Blade, meaning that, you know, it's going to be a single target water spout. Does a little bit more than it did last turn, but still not enough to really be any consideration as a threat from John Mark's perspective. But the Max Geyser is going to happily take on that Zacian. It's a bit of a wet dog, going to go back into its ball, you know, dry itself off a little bit. As, you know, Thunderous will be one that comes in, I believe, from the back. Which, in the perspective of this Kyogre, which is Dynamaxed, in front of a Thunderous which can now Dynamax. So, you know, it's going to have to kind of pivot around things, because we see Incineroar on the back. That's been very annoying. It is Zacian. Zacian will be faster than this Thunderous, but... Thunderous being an electric type could maybe take a hit from the Behemoth Blade and you know can put pressure on this Kyogre straight away. So now Jean Marc is in a position where he's got to think, I'm in a 2v2. Both of these Pokemon aren't going to enjoy being hit by the moves I can throw out. 
but at the same time, his Pokemon aren't enjoying the moves that could be thrown out if the play is made correctly. And, you know, they're both not taking a Max Lightning, Kyogre could go for a Max Guard, Zashian could go for a Protect. You could see any plethora of moves going through, and we're in that situation at the end of the game again where, you know, but Rowan has flipped the coin, has turned the side of the field, and has said, I'm going to preserve my Dynamax. And is, you know, using that data to, you know, kind of be ahead and be like, oh, your Dynamax is going to go while mine is being set up. You can protect, I can just go through, through that. You know, it's loads of steps as we do see Dynamax does happen. And Evan, you know, it is a bit of a salt in the wound here where this ta the tactic has been swapped over to the other side of the field. Yeah, that's true. Rowan was really very patient all throughout the game because Thunderous is the, you know, the one that makes the difference here. John Mark brought, you know, Zashin, um, Kyogre and uh, Among Us, right? And then Rowan also brought the same. But the difference here is uh, John Mark's Grimmsnarl versus Rowan's Thunderous. And Rowan has, you know, a bit more flexibility in Dynamax here. While Rowan does, like, calls the Kyogre Max Guard, goes for the um, Max Lightning into the Zashin and is just able to trade KOs here. You know, John Mark has, um, John Mark's Zashin is only one turn to move, essentially. Like, if it hits, um, the Beamer Blade into the Thunderous, then if Origin Pulse hits on Rowan's end, then it would always take out the Zashan here. So, unfortunate turn of events from John Mark. He was really playing in the back foot, you know, to try and get, get things back. But this late Dynamax of the Thunderous is just too powerful from Rowan's side. Yeah, Rowan just preserving all the possible options to kind of defeat that Kaigo, it would be big or small. Doesn't try and cheese it with a Max, with a max Airstream, goes straight for that strong electric type super effective attack. And Jean Marc, you know, kind of accepting it, considering data, maybe being like, okay, if we, you know, any of our players meet later down the line, we can kind of keep that to ourselves. But, you know, very good game there. Just Rowan kind of playing it out and being like, oh, I took game one, lost game two, took game three with a bit of a, you know, coin flip. Like I said, the strategy was turned on its head. And where he was going very offensive early on and getting the damage off straight away, he kind of realized Jean Marc preserving his. Dynamax and his strong Pokemon to the end. So he thought he'd do the same, and that worked out amazingly. And just pushed him forward that extra step, an extra mile, meaning that India and Canada, as of the stream game, are currently neck and neck. Yeah, so both tying up one and one, both uh, our both these matches being able to be put on stream, right, from us to present to you all. Very exciting for these two countries. They seem very evenly matched. And also, like, based on past statistics, based on their performance, their journeys all the way here, yeah, they do have a very good um, matchup against each other. And, yeah, I come, like, I'm excited to see how the rest of this week turns out and which of these two teams come out on top and get to advance to top eight for the first time in their career of Pokemon um, World Cup of VGC. So... Uh, very yeah, very interesting game, and all our games today went to game three. You know this, like, and they were all like back and forth, and very good quality. So very nice of um, very happy to be able to bring these all to you guys. Yeah, it's always amazing to have those games, and we'll have to have a little bit of a break first, but don't go anywhere because we have an amazing game lined up for the ver for the finale of the first day of top eight, which will be Emilio versus Hippoly two top players, you know, kind of coming in to the pre-COVID era. So stay tuned for that and we'll be right back. <laughs> 